today on EL Now. Welcome to the EL Now Christmas Special, where we celebrate 2015, a year of phenomenal Nigerian entertainment. Today, it's media personality and actor Dakore Ibusun on the hot seat. She dishes on juggling motherhood with her tasking day job. I had two children, so of course, within that time, I had to focus on my family. Mm -hmm. I could have chosen to try and juggle Do everything at the same yeah. time, mm -hmm. but it was just too crazy for me. Her rise this year in the entertainment industry and working with the crew of her latest movie, 50. Even the director, he was so clear about his vision for Tola and we were able to really work, you know. And Bringing you closer to your favorite celebrities, this is EL Now. Welcome to what has been a fabulous year in the entertainment industry and this is our special edition of EL Now and today I have with me someone who has made a significant mark in the Nigeria's entertainment scene. I have award-winning actress, TV presenter, singer, everything fashionable, Dakore Akonde. Fine. It's not nice. No, it takes one to know one. <laughs> get it, girl. Get it. I know. Uh -huh. Just making sure. Okay. So tell me, how did you start off um, in the acting industry? Wow. Um, totally by accident. I think the the industry found me actually okay. because I honestly didn't have any grand plans of becoming an actor mm -hmm. or anything. I was at that time very con you know consistently working towards my degree in mass communication yeah. and so that was my whole idea and of course I was doing music as well before okay. I came into acting so that was my whole um, I guess idea of what I was going to be and what yeah. I was going to do but God had other plans mm -hmm. so I, I would say it started really in 97 it was 1997 okay. um, I was on a gap year from from work from school rather shot my, uh, did my diploma in Masscom and went to work and was while I was there I was, I'd worked in an advertising agency and I started working in a PR firm and then this all of a sudden they were opening up a television production arm and so they said oh Dakari you're so bubbly and chatty and you know I guess you look good you know that time they were all you know people were always <laughs> always kind of needing me mm -hmm. um, and so they said oh why don't you just read for this part um, rather audition for this television program and so that's how I, I did the, you know, the audition did the screen test and got the job and it was while I was there MME song had started in production as well and they had a partnership to um, do a sitcom called Inheritance and that was my first um, foray into the whole um, acting thing mm -hmm. and from there she saw my talent mm -hmm. and she thought I would make a great actor someday and so she said oh I'm gonna call you back you know, I'm gonna call you for a film I'm like yeah okay she contacted me like she said like about a year later um, I'd gone back to university to mm -hmm. do my degree at this point and from Silent Tears to The Playboy to um, She Devil uh -huh. and Emotional Crack yeah. and then after that it was just boom from one guy, his name is uh, Richard, and he said you should call him or something. Else. What? And you didn't tell me since. Did you give me an opportunity? When you were ranting and raving like a wounded lion. When I asked a couple of people, like, oh, so what movie do you remember that career? They were like, oh, She Devil. She Devil. <laughs> like, really? They okay. still remember that? Okay, so tell me, tell me about that. That, that wow, movie. that was that was intense. That was a really, really <laughs> intense know. film. Um, you know, thinking back on it now, it's mm -hmm. like, what were we thinking, you know? Um, but it was just, it was an MME song production, but it was also in um, co-production co with um, Lilian Ama, Aluko okay. now. Um, Aquila and Jama directed it. Yeah. It had Hank Anuku, it had um, JT Tom West, who you know I love and is you know blessed memory now, um, and Rita Dominic, and we were all in that film. And Stop no, no, I'm sorry, she devil. No, no, no. She, uh, Rita wasn't in She Devil. No, okay. it was just me because Silent Tears. Yeah, Rita oh, yeah. was in it. Okay. But She Devil, yes, in particular, yeah. Those, so those were those were the the culprits at the time. <laughs> and I think the character really came to life because. Up until then, you always saw women in film being battered. Yeah. 
being put upon, you know, always crying. But I came in with, you know, a lot of guts <laughs> and a lot of like, like okay. you know, like, you know, like, and she was, she was the fire starter, you know. So f I think it was very special at that time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of why people just resonated with yeah. the film, even though my character was so bad, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, but ah. she was so good being bad, mm -hmm. you know, like at being bad rather, you know, you, I brought it, you know, so people were like, for a long you time, people were afraid of me. Life. Yeah, people yeah. were scared to even <laughs> see me, you know, come up to me in the street because it's just like, <laughs> she like, is crazy. Of all the movies, really, she <laughs> devil. Ah. But then, of course, they had a really sensational yes, name. Was. I mean, she devil. At the time, it was called Sweet Secrets. Mm -hmm. That was the, the working title. Yeah. And then here I come, I see posters and I'm like my face all bloodied with a bottle and I'm just like, oh my God. But it, it worked and people okay. people loved it and from there, then of course when I did Emotional Crack, everything just went helter skelter. It was like, you oh, it's everywhere. a wrap, it's done, she's nuts. Baby, you know, you said you love me. Love? <laughs> that word does not even exist in my dictionary. I love no one. You just came in to do what I was going to do anyway. Coming up next on EO Now. I honestly just got bored with mm -hmm. where we were in Hollywood. We weren't really, we, we were going through a very stagnant time, I would say around Hmm, 2006, 2007, mm -hmm. the film is just kind of started Yamachi getting into part one, now. two, three, four. It started getting Hi, ridiculous. My name is Richard, my friend, and you're watching Ebony Live TV. Welcome back. We still have here with us award-winning actress Dakore Akonde. Charles, I think at this point we have to define what exactly it is we have here. Cindy, you know I love you. You do. Charles, be a man, okay? Because until you call off your relationship with Michelle, I'm sorry, I don't think we have anything here. And you I know. remember you with your dress. Yes, I do too. What way? What made you cut it off? I was, sad. I was bored. I was actually just <laughs> bored. It's really, really that simple. I, I'm actually someone, I get bored really quickly. But for me to have even stuck with that hairstyle for so for long, mm -hmm. 13 years, it's not a joke. That's I know for women, we like to change our look. We like to, and I did mm -hmm. a lot with it, you know, mm -hmm. like it was long and then it was short yeah. and then I colored it. I mean, mm -hmm. I tried, I really tried to stretch it as much as I could, but it got to a point where I was just bored and I wanted to, you know, I mean, but my hair is still natural. Yeah. I mean, forever Yay. and ever. Team Natural when it wasn't even Team in, Natural. When it wasn't even in vogue, I guess remember? You got it from the likes of, you know, people. Like yeah, <laughs> because to be honest, I really went through a lot with that hairstyle. People were like, oh, you know, are you crazy? That's are you okay? what I get. People were like, are you okay? Are you okay? Like, do you have, are you, like, come are you a mermaid? What like, what like? are you? You know, like, you know, <laughs> you have a spiritual connotation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so much stuff, you know, but I'm someone that, you know, once I get in my head, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I don't listen to, I don't allow yes, people, man. yeah. And now everybody wants to have their hair now. Yeah. So it's kind of like, okay. You see? Trendsetters. Hello. Rose rock, guys. Hello. Rose rock. <laughs> but, you know, if you don't want to, if you, you know, you want to perm your hair, that's fine yeah, too. That's you right. know, there's no shame. Yeah, no, no. hair shaming. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. Well, really. That's what I yeah, say. own it. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with you? It's you and this your money overdose friend here that something is wrong with. God, Michelle. Money can buy you, but it sure can't buy me. A lot of people came out saying that, hmm, huh. so she's married now. <sighs> her husband doesn't want her to act anymore. Yes. He said she cut off all her hair. Yes. And I'm like, okay, was that really true? And then you took a long break mm -hmm. from the acting industry. And we're like, oh, she's gone. He doesn't want her to act anymore. Oh, and then you came okay. back. Okay. Yeah. So now you're here. <laughs> yes. I feel like I should ask you the question like, yes. what really happened? Well, what really happened was. I honestly just got bored with mm -hmm. where we were in Hollywood. We weren't really, we, we were going through a very stagnant time, I would say around 
hmm, 2006, 2007, mm -hmm. the films just kind of started getting to part one, two, three, four. It started getting ridiculous. So personally, I was I was a bit disgruntled yeah. with the whole thing. And it just happened to coincide with the time where I met my husband, mm -hmm. my now husband, who was my boyfriend at the time. And it was just time. It was time for me to just kind of, you know, just take, take stock mm -hmm. and um, just nurture my relationship that be, that became more important at that time mm -hmm. and that's just the god honest truth yeah and while i was doing that we got married and then i had two children mm -hmm. so of course it, within that time i had to focus on my family mm -hmm. i could have chosen to try and juggle Do everything something. at the same yeah. time mm -hmm. but it was just too crazy for me the transition was too much and it was i think god really just wanted to take me out of it for a little bit mm -hmm. and I think it really has helped me as an actor now mm -hmm. even because I've experienced so much more about life and I wasn't all about work 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 mm -hmm. so I needed to breathe and you know and now I have so much more you know value to add to my craft yeah. and so when people were saying all the things they said I didn't say anything not because I just kind of you know agreed that that was what it was but because I couldn't be bothered to be mm -hmm. quite honest I was going to focus on my own life and um, and do what I have to do and so when they were saying all that stuff even when sometimes I would say no I'm still working I'm just not focusing on that at the moment the scripts that I've read that I'm not keen yeah. on mm -hmm. I'm not just gonna do it because of that pressure um, but I also missed out on some work yes on some really really like um, to no 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 I don't <laughs> want to do that nah, we've moved know. on we've okay. moved on okay, that's fine. but yeah it you know so that that was also hard. It mm -hmm. was very hard, though. Don't get me wrong, you know. There I were times know, that I was I like, oh, my God, you know, I, like, I, I want to do this film, I want to do this, but it was always clashing. That's you, family actually came first. Family and came first, and, and it's so yeah. important because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you can have the fame, you can have the fortune, if that's what you want, but yeah. I always knew I wanted a family, you know, yeah. so, and in life, I think a woman can have it all, but not at the same time. Um, I really believe that because you need to give time. That even in the Bible, Ecclesiastes says there's time for everything. There's a time and a season. So mm -hmm. I had to take that time away. But I'm back to work. You know, You're it was. It was, it was. It was. There was never any question of me not coming back to work or not okay. working. God has been faithful, and um, you know, I've been getting good work. Yes. Because some people can go away and not come back. It's very easy. You know. So I've had to really claw true, my way true, back. True, it's true, not true, been true, easy. True. I didn't just. True. You know, I had to start from you know from scratch pretty much you know but i think i'd left such a good legacy of mm -hmm. you know body yeah, of work and everything so yeah. that really helped me to be able to to get back yeah okay okay <laughs> all right so we're going to go on a quick break okay. and when we come back we'll talk lunchtime heroes okay. and 50 which are your recent yes. <laughs> so we'll be right back we came here to have a good time considering the fact that we haven't seen each other in a while but it's obvious you you're no fun anymore and you've turned into some kind of mother hen. And I'll show you I'm no spring chicken at all. Coming up next on EO Now. Something about when you read a script mm -hmm. and you just know, absolutely, I have to be in this film. Welcome back. We still have here with us award-winning actress, TV presenter, and fabulous mom. Oh, oh. bless you. Your Thank you. Gorgeous. Thank you. Sense. How's it like, like being a mother I'm slash actress? I'm a big slash. softy as a mom. Mm -hmm. Big softy. I can't stand to hear them cry. Oh. I'm very like that. Yes, mm -hmm. like, and they know. So now they're just like, eh, just because they know mommy's going to just run out like, hey, what, what, what? Yeah, I'm them. always, yeah, I'm that type of mom. I'm very involved. Mm -hmm. I love my children to death. Um, and they just make me want to to do better, yeah. you know, and to be a good role model. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important for me because I have daughters and I don't want them to grow up thinking that, oh, you know, if I want to do anything in life, I have to wait on someone. I want them to be self-reliant and independent. Mm -hmm. and, and I think by them seeing me go to work, I think it's a very powerful message. True. So I just want to keep, you know, being better and having to just be present. Yeah. I think that's also a challenge, you know, with work balancing juggling everything mm -hmm. 
it's intense it really is but i love them i love them so much they've given so much more meaning to my life mm -hmm. um, before it was all about me and my f my family but now it's like it's another all one all of us <laughs> yeah <laughs> my name is Banky Alimini. i'm the new copper deployed here will you get out of my office <laughs> okay um so let's talk lunchtime heroes okay um i'm like okay obviously you got like a lot of scripts mm -hmm. what what's what said to you i should do this movie yes the spirit said to me <laughs> you know it's it's really something about when you read a script mm -hmm. and you just know absolutely i have to be in this film there were many things that drew me to the film the fact that it's a family oriented film yeah. with a wholesome message um and something for the young the really young because in, in it's like we've neglected them it's true, like they're not true, <laughs> they're invisible and uh, we allow our we allow the cartoons and all those things to entertain them we're not using anything that's inherently ours mm -hmm. so and then of course i always wanted everyone's called me headmistress because i'm the oldest i yeah, have okay. four siblings so i've always been in charge so i ha i'm i'm it's something that i'm comfortable with that people are like oh yeah yeah headmistress she's coming because i'm very specific like going you know, about things like this is the way it should be da, da, da. Hey, i received a letter from the ministry of education informing us that we have been chosen as one of the schools to participate in the governor's inter-school academic sports and skills challenge for junior secondary school students i want to know if there's anything i can do to help so i said hmm this would be a nice you know change from mm -hmm. what i've normally played and mm -hmm. you know for women our roles are always very either the yeah. femme fatale or the, the battered wife or the you know so it's very cliche but this so wasn't something cliche different something was, different yeah. and i'm a fan of shea baba Tokwe as well i mean he did when love happens and yes, oh, joe's in the house so i could see that this is a guy who's trying to do something different mm -hmm. so I, you know when he told me about the the story and i read the script i was like oh absolutely you did I absolutely mean, thank you i was so <laughs> yeah i was like <laughs> different yeah yeah but that's that's you know that's what you want as that's an artist you want, you want to keep on doing things differently no, no, no. and i was getting a little stereotype myself mm -hmm. in hollywood and i'm very aware of it and it was really it became oh you go to for the the wild one the crazy one the one that stand up to everybody you know mm -hmm. but you can still do that but have variation in the roles okay. so That's that true. gave me a very different so those were the things when I thought about it and the marketing mm -hmm. and all that stuff I said yeah this is the kind of film that I want to be part of definitely definitely what kind of party planner are you your behavior is just totally unacceptable highly unprofessional they're calling you neurotic a drama queen I want items that scream class how many times must I say it? Money is not my problem, but how to spend it. Coming up next on EO Now. The story is about women, mm -hmm. and women are always ostracized. They're always, you know, we, we, we just have an impossible fight. Mm -hmm. You know, from the moment you're born into this world, you're as a woman, you know, you're, there's, a, there's a path for you. Everybody expects certain That's things true, from yeah. you. but a beast i ought to get someone to slit his throat so welcome back guys still have with me award-winning dakoria konde tell us about your role. okay tola rft baby that's diva. what i call her diva <laughs> of life um she's a, a re reality tv star mm -hmm. um you know who on the outside has everything going for her she has her own show um she's you know from an affluent background living in vi you mm -hmm. know she's schooled abroad you know the whole thing she's mm -hmm. a world-class woman yeah. you know turning 50 and she's just so consumed by that life and she's kind of used it to get away from the craziness of her own personal mm -hmm. life um, she's almost substituted it for that because she's in a miserable marriage mm -hmm. and she's just trying to figure out her life but she has a deep very deep dark family secret yeah um, so I think what I loved about Tola was the fact that she wasn't just a diva for the fun of it mm -hmm. it was because she had you know some deep-seated issues which is really like everyone else in the world True. we all have our challenges you know some people come to work and they're just so grouchy 
grouchy and grumpy and you'd be wondering oh, what, what's his problem what's, mm -hmm. what's her problem but if you you know look back they're probably dealing with something that they can't even explain or sure. talk about so I think it, it just spoke to that humanity of the fact that we're all in this thing together and mm -hmm. no matter what facades we all have we're all going through something, something. yeah was the character something that you were like let's say you were going through a similar experience yes was that was that um, was the character something that you would relate to? Would that be your... Oh, for sure. <laughs> I think, yeah, because the, the story is about women mm -hmm. and women are always ostracized. They're always, you know, we, we, we just have an impossible fight. Mm -hmm. You know, from the moment you're born into this world, you're as a woman, you know, you're, there's, a, there's a path for you. Everybody expects certain That's things from you. You have know, you have to be stuff. this. And society <clears throat> just puts up all these expectations on you. So I could definitely relate to so many mm -hmm. things. It, it, maybe even not in my own personal role, I could relate to something Inset's character was feeling. I could relate to something Antirati's character was feeling. You know, or money, the same thing. You know, so it's it's a universal struggle, and I mm -hmm. think you don't even really have to go through a specific you know issue to understand it. You know your mom, you know your aunt, somebody in the yeah, family has gone through, through the same thing. Similar. So I think that was something about the script that just it was able to encapsulate all those things. So there were even things said that weren't said they mm -hmm. were seen yeah and it's it, it's communicated so it was just powerful and the script and then the director and then the crew and it was world-class I mean I I I can't I mean <laughs> I can't <laughs> I, so cool, like, so like. I can't <laughs> okay speaking of the cast and crew yes. how was it like working with them it was amazing I was I was excited to come to work mm -hmm. every day everything mm -hmm. was on point every you know everyone knew what they were supposed to do yeah. there was no oh this that and the other you know you're the, even the director he was so clear about his vision for Tola and we were able to really work you know and I would look at him and he would be like yeah okay and if, if not he'd be like yeah you know we we had a language yeah. everybody we all worked in in unison mm -hmm. and, and it really worked honestly was there, was there any point where you felt like you know you you disagreed with your character you, you weren't feeling it you wanted something different yeah there were times like that mm -hmm. and I would I would you know I had the carte blanche to go to the director and say hey B what do you think about this I was thinking that oh okay I see this but what about you know so it was a collaboration mm -hmm. it wasn't like hey she's this and that because yeah. really when you're acting you you start to find out about the character in the process mm -hmm. and so something that might you know translate on on the on this in the script may not work when you're actually working on it the language and you know the nuances so yeah now I'm speaking so yeah it's some okay. actress speak <laughs> but yeah so it was a real collaboration mm -hmm. it was and I didn't want to be obvious about Tola what's your favorite part of that movie I'm, I'm, I'm talking in regards to your own okay to my own okay yes. oh god there's so many <laughs> um I think my favorite part is a confrontation with her parents oh that man is nothing but a beast I ought to get someone to slit his throat I think okay. it's my favorite part I think that's the pivotal time yes. that everybody gets a sense of her reality mm -hmm. what she's been dealing with and understanding her a little more in fact a lot more from yeah. that scene so yes that's my favorite scene the media we have such a responsibility you know if only we know that and I think that's what you know as our executive producer and Oga at the top here Mo Abudu she knows that and she, she wants to rewrite mm -hmm. the script you know because really it can't it can't continue and the media has the power to bring to light all these issues so that things can get changed yeah. hopefully Maybe. so yeah it's awesome okay you also <laughs> played um, your your brother yes <laughs> yes yes Actually yes he, alongside you he did How was it like working with your brother it was awesome <laughs> we wanted to both do justice to the roles mm -hmm. we're both actors mm -hmm. he actually worked with B before me oh. so before everyone now thinks oh nepotism she got oh. in the job yeah oh. thank God I have a, a medium to say it so he'd worked with B already in sugar MTV based sugar yes, yes, yes. so we already knew him you already had him in mind for this okay. for the, um, the, the the job so he got it on mer on his own merit any any particular ritual before you go on set I've heard someone says she, she goes and then she cries and then she lets it all out I'm like what are you letting out exactly but well she's like oh yeah that's that's how that's how it comes okay out. Well, so interesting yeah everyone has their to anyone or um no 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 I'm I'm normal mm -hmm. I'm normal 
I had a few films that I'd watched just to get a sense of, you know, how okay. authoritarian okay. she was. Okay. Um, Devil's Wear, Devil Wears Prada was a favorite. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Alexis Carrington, oh. you know, yes. Okay. <laughs> so there was a bit of those, yeah, so those were my own ways of, you know, and everyone has their own kind of yeah, style, okay. yeah, but I think for me that was really it. But then when I got home, to get her out of my system was a bit hard. So you go home <laughs> and you be like, stand up! I was like, okay, no, that's all that. <laughs> it's not me. It's really crazy. Being an actor is crazy. It's like one of the craziest things you can ever really wow. do. I'm telling you. What, oh were there any, you know, challenging aspects of the movie? Wow. I think what was most challenging was the fact that um, I'm not the age of the character. Mm. That how was, was most how, challenging. How, how was it like for you? Bringing, you know, trying to sound like, you know, 20 years older. <laughs> It, it was a real it was it was really tough it really was um, but I had I found her somehow you know I found her and I was able to just kind of hold on to her um, even my mannerisms the way I spoke things like that mm -hmm. it was very different it's very different from the way I normally speak you know so I allowed myself to just kind of become the character grow a yes older. <laughs> grow a little older yeah. um, I also did a lot of research talked to a lot of women of that age mm -hmm. which I'm exposed to because my mom is of that age mm -hmm. group well you've done a lot I had the grace say. of God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I must ask you, any personal goals yet unattained? Plenty. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You just want to do Plenty. that. Plenty. There's okay. so many things I want well, to do. Well, let's hear some of them. I want to bungee jump. <laughs> I want to jump out of a plane. I want to um, I want to paint mm -hmm. um, because I actually I have that mm -hmm. side of me, but I haven't really, you know, given it a chance to express itself. I want to get back to my music. Ah, oh, music. Um, what's, what, what's, what's up with that? It's tough. It's really tough. You know, just trying to juggle all these balls is too much. And the industry is hardcore. Like, music is intense. Our films is intense. Uh, sometimes I'm like, why now? You know, like, why didn't I do it when I... I did it when I was younger. Mm -hmm. But I did, did it on stop? a different... Because... I don't know I, I guess because of the way things happened it was I'd finished my my show in London at the Ro Ro Royal Festival Hall the Queen Elizabeth Hall mm -hmm. I just opened for Roy Hargrove as a musician with my own band and then two days later I had to be at the New York African Film Festival for emotional crack so it was after that emotional crack just happened and then I started getting all these films so I started traveling back to Nigeria for that and music just took a back seat it wasn't because that was the way I wanted it mm -hmm. I had always looked at myself as a musician so it's very hard it's very very hard but I still have I haven't stopped um, singing I haven't stopped writing yeah well okay. writing has been a little tougher with all the other stuff I have to do mm -hmm. so I had a little bit of a writer's blog but now I can I feel more inspired and I'm writing more so it's there it's just so a matter of time there's an album coming soon let's just you know let me just put it out there you know <laughs> there's an album coming soon hopefully when i see this i'll be like oh yes i said it you said it you better yes. do it you said it because you have to speak right things here. sometimes into you have to speak into existence and you know when the universe hears it and they catch it and say okay now it's the time mm -hmm. so the music is definitely mm -hmm. you know it's top of my list i want to expand my horizons i want to work in hollywood why why not you mm -hmm. know i want hollywood musicians um, actors to come over here and work with us yeah. because we have a lot to, to, to gain, you know, when we collaborate more so. And the world is so global and you know, it's, I think it's time. It's a good time. It's a good time to be an artist. Well, thank you so much. It's thank been you. A great, a great, great, great time. I've enjoyed it. I, I must commend you for the work that you do. You thank are you. beautiful inside and out. Thank Keep you. Keep doing what you do. Your fans out there. We are fans. Our fans. We My love fans. And appreciate oh, you. thank you guys. I'm so glad that you could join us today. Of course. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. <laughs> thank you for having me. Party planner, are you? Your behavior is just totally unacceptable. Highly unprofessional. They're calling you neurotic, a drama queen. I want items that scream class. How many times must I say it? Money is not my problem, but how to spend it. Hello, my name is Dakori Igbusuna Konde, and I want to wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs>